Those Damn Ross Kids is a podcast for adults, and the opinions we express do not reflect the opinions of our employers or even ourselves. If you would like to support the show, go to duckfeed.tv slash tip jar and check out our Patreon campaign. Hello? Hello. What's up? Not much. How are you? I'm sick. Still? Yeah. That sucks. I have no immune system. No. <laughs> well, it is it is true that you uh, did grow up in a box. I wish. What do you mean? Really? You have to ask more questions. I wish I grew up in a box. <laughs> Between Brothers, featuring Chris and Cole Ross. No, 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 really. Like, how, how sick are you? I'm ill. Okay. Yeah. Like, like that, like that concert you went to in '97. It's ill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just, uh, you know, have some. Some of the head cold and sore throat. Yeah. You know what that sounds like? Sounds like plane sickness. Yeah. I was on a plane. Yeah. With my flippy floppies. Yeah. I think that's a different... I mean, the flippy floppies would be easier to take on and put off. Oh, they're a must. Yeah. Also, I just said take on and put off, so... Take... Well, you know, I would... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to catch your own airs because I'm not listening. <laughs> How would that be any different? Oh, it's not. I just occasionally I want you to, to you know, remind you nothing's <laughs> changed. Uh, we still have the same policies here at Chris. <laughs> but I mean, is there like an end user license agreement that I can that I can read? Yeah, you did actually. Oh, did I click? Yes. Yeah, she, you agreed to the full ulna. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not humorous at all, Chris. No, you starred and you, you clicked on the, you know, the, the I agree to the uvula and the, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. To, yeah. I gave you, gave you your, your hippo laws. <laughs> Hippos are dangerous. Lot, lots of hippo restrictions. <laughs> when they poop, they spray the poop with their tail. I asked the lady today if she could give me the results of my test. You know, I called the doctor's office, and she said, "No, we can't because of because of a hip, because a hippo." <laughs> I said, "Excuse me, <sighs> like you're gonna like there's a hippo? Well, they can't do much until they're fed, right? Yeah, lots of cabbage. Yeah, yeah, it's very stinky. That's what manatees eat too. Really." Yep, they eat up to 150 pounds of foliage a day. Yeah, uh, manatees are like, uh, um, yeah, uh, cabbage is grass. It is right? in the grass family. Yeah. Too bad the propeller chopped off his fin. <laughs> D- delicious. Yeah. Did you know there are people who think that rice is potato seeds? Yeah, I think we've been over this. Have we? Damn it. Yeah, I think I'm the one who told you they weren't. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know what? I think that the last time we went over that, I had just eaten like a one of those frozen uh, like rice dishes that I eat, you right. know, with the chicken and the snap peas and whatnot and the and yeah. the rice. I was like, Lon- oh, this is weird. L- lonely trays. Yeah, lonely trays. Uh, yeah, with, uh, with, uh, with one of the two uh, kinds of rice that there are. Yeah, well, you know, you get like an extra packet of sad sauce. <laughs> well, no, the sad sauce is it's it's in a layer. So the the, the food is in a basket uh, that is suspended over the sauce. And when you cook it, you just, like when you're done, you you take the foil off and you dump the food in the sad sauce. And then you, then you just you know roll roll it around in there with a fork like like an animal. And then you just go and eat it and cry. Yeah, seven layer depression dip. So I can't I can't say like exactly hmm. where we cut for the for the intro there. We had about seven possible intros. Oh, I thought you already did that when I told you some we have to ask more questions. Uh, yeah. No, no, just uh we just roll with them. And that that, that may or may not be the case. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. And it's, ah, so so for anybody my who's phone's gonna ring. Oh, okay. Nope, just getting an email. <laughs> 
Never mind. <laughs> what are you? Is this like Pee Wee? <laughs> oh, yeah. you said the secret word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just the microphone goes all haywire. <laughs> oh no, it's your monitor. It doesn't come through. Don't worry, that's GSM. I don't know how you're getting GSM interference off of that because you're on a CMDA phone, but we'll uh, we'll talk about it. Chris, what's your name? Uh, <laughs> Chris? Yeah, what episode is this? Episode number 140. Eight? Eight? Yeah. 148 of the comedy podcast, Those Damn Ross Kids. Y- your name is Chris? I Again, yes. Okay, cool. I just wanted to double check. And, and you uh, and, and my name is Cole, and we're here to entertain your asses. Chris, are you at liberty to discuss your adventure at all? I am, but I'd like to discuss yours. How were the protests in Ferguson? <laughs> well, you know, uh, we, we thought that the odds were against us. Um, but really, when you got the police on your side, no. Um, I heard you got some kick-ass around sound equipment. No, no. Chris, you're going to bum me out. Like, that's legit a depressing topic for me. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't go. No, but like over the past week, you got a black friend, right? Uh, yeah okay well you're good well i mean but that's but that's that's the last refuge of the scoundrel chris <laughs> basically saying i have a black friend is the same thing as saying i'm super racist it's no what it's saying is i'm racist but i tolerate them existing so i'm not a racist yeah, yeah. god fuck this country Sorry. Nah, i mean he's got a four-wheeler i, I see why you're friends with him <laughs> no i mean what happens if you need to like scoot real quick across some dunes Right. Yeah, four wheel four wheelers are sweet. Let's call Eddie. Because black people I said let's call Eddie. Because black people can be named Eddie. Yeah, man. I feel uh, is this what the live show is gonna be like? <laughs> you just you making us uncomfortable. Oh, it's gonna be horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be real bad. Uh yeah. Just gonna be me me following. I am so sorry. I am so so sorry, everybody. <sighs> <laughs> So th- let's just put it this way. It's going to look, look, like, look like something that was videotaped in uh, in Syria. <laughs> Jeez. You're just leaning into every unpleasant thing happening, aren't you? I read news. You do? I do. Sorry, I didn't mean to express that by surprise. <laughs> Which part? N- n- no, no. The, the You read news? Oh. Which is, which is basically how I said that thing I just about said. <laughs> Jinxy, Scoob. Jinxy. <laughs> Ah, man. Yeah, no, I didn't go to Ferguson, but I'm real bummed out by what's happening there. Um, I'm not so much. I think that I think that it's going to be good because I think that there's going to be some new younger leaders of that whole African American kind of thing. Well, I mean, it's getting people involved. I don't necessarily know that. I just think that there's going to be a point when they stand when there's going to be some younger people that stand up and say like, you know, Al Sharpton, he doesn't speak for me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and get out, just get off of the whole, you know, what, what I should have, what I don't have and who took it from me and, and make a new message about it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of sad because that new message really ought to be and what people are. It's it, it's shitty that what people have to say is, hey, maybe don't shoot unarmed teenagers. It sounds horrible, but I guess what I'm saying is, is that, you know, you, you get put in those situations and I don't think that there's police officers that just shoot people. I really, really don't. There's police officers that maybe make bad decisions, mm-hmm. make decisions based on like fear, maybe, or, or whatever the case may be, uh, PTSD from, cause from serving, mm-hmm. um, you know, or something like that. But I, I don't, I, I honestly don't think that there are police officers that just shoot people. There's police, yeah, there's police officers that absolutely 100% go out every day looking to pull over a hot woman and say, you know, there is one way to get out of this ticket. And then they go behind a strip mall and bang yeah. it out. I think that that's, you know, I, that, you know, that's why I'm not a cop anymore. But <laughs> yeah, you just, so yeah. You just have to take a, take a pull off of your big gulp there? Yeah, no, I actually have so much phlegm and spit in my mouth from being sick that the cup runneth over. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. But no, I, I, I really just, yeah. Don't. Can we talk about comedy? No, I, we have to talk about one more one more horrible <laughs> thing. Jeez. Or actually, you might actually think this is a great thing. You, 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 might, you might need a, to, to celebrate with some drinks after I tell you about this. Okay. Um, it, it turns out that, Corey, you know who Corey Griffin is? 
No. He's one of the guys that like created the ice bucket challenge. Because yeah, he had yeah. a friend who was suffering with ALS. Uh-huh. Uh, Corey Griffin was 27, and I say was because he uh, jumped off a building and killed himself. Jesus Christ. Why would you say I'm happy about that? Because you hate the ice bucket challenge. I don't hate it. I think it's self-serving, and I think that you know a, a lot of what's going around is like, <laughs> look at me, as opposed to like raising money to uh, stop a, a, a horrible disease. However, yeah. No, I, I would never glorify in somebody killing <laughs> themselves. Fuck, man. Who am I talking? That's not what you said last night on the phone. <laughs> what What do you mean? I mean, this is a conversation between brothers. Like, when we talk on the phone, you, you said something totally different. I feel like you're being disingenuous to the audience. Chris, you're, you, you are painting. I, I'm, none of this is usable. You said AL, ALS is weakness. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> And that, and that you hope that the creators of the Ice Buck Challenge uh, would jump off a building uh, to make the out. world a better. You're, you're taking it out of Actually, context. Actually, you said you wanted him to jump off the Juice Guys building. Jesus. Which is the building this guy jumps off of? What the fuck are Juice Guys? Juice, what, what is it? Juice Guys? I just, the Juice Guys building. The, like, it, like like the Jamba Brothers? It's in, Nan, it's in Nantucket. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, that fucking sucks. Yeah, I don't know. But evidently the guy was really happy because it took off and then suddenly he jumps off of a building. So I, I definitely smell some sort of uh, conspiracy mm. that I think you're the head of. God, I don't even know. Because like I read that story. It's like, oh, that's beyond the pale. Huh. Which part? Oh, about the guy? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And then everything you said that I said, which I didn't say. Oh, OK. Mm. I'll send you the, the MP3 that I have of you saying it. <laughs> Why are you maybe, tapping my phone? Maybe, maybe you can splice it in. You're you're aware. You're aware that in Ohio, both parties need to be aware, right? Negative. Only one. Checked it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Nine ninety nine. An app called Tape a Call. Tape a Call oh. Pro. Actually. Does it d- 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 does it give you legal advice inside the app? I got no. No. It, it, it actually outlines it. it. Tells you what states you can do it in and the instructions. I got the pro version because um, in the light version, you uh you got advertisements for minute made lemonade in the middle of your, in the middle of your your, your recordings hmm. so that's i mean depending on what you're recording that could be really unfortunate right yeah hmm yeah i'm not happy with anything we've said so far <laughs> I, I told you i just had to get this get through this i mean i just thought everybody should know <laughs> God. Uh, you know what you're right you're right i am a monster I don't know. Don't say it if you don't mean it. <laughs> so do you want to talk about your adventure? Yeah. Yeah. Are you done being horrible? I guess. I don't know. Act, right? No, I figure, I figure you've, you, you, you've bled the pus out. Yeah, so let's, let's let this wound heal, this superating, sucking chest wound heal that you have inflicted upon, this, upon the fabric of this, of this creative ongoing endeavor. Are you no, going to no, take go. off that plantation owner costume? Jesus. Chris, I told you. I'm you Colonel look, Sanders. You look like Richard Gere from uh, that uh, that one movie. Officer and a Gentleman? No, though. Uh, the, 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 some, uh, what is it called? Mothman Prophecies? No, not that one. Runaway Pretty, Bride? Pretty Django? Jesus. Django, that's the one. Wait, wait was Richard Gere in Django Unchained? He was. He was the plantation owner. Huh. Uh, I just I revealed I that, that I was... have that, that I hadn't seen. Uh, uh, no, you're. I believe that's Leonardo DiCaprio. Maybe it was. Maybe it was Ben Knotts. Oh, Don's son. Right. Yeah. Huh. Why did that come to me so easily? Well, I would. I would have guessed retarded cousin, but. <laughs> God, man, you you are in rare form. You're full. You're full of piss and vinegar. What do you What do you want? I don't. You want, I don't... Me, to, you want to turn it down? Maybe. Maybe. Huh. Hmm. I had a, yeah, I had an adventure. Yeah. Yep. Went to uh, Florida. Ugh, why would you do that? Uh, passed through ATL, Georgia, with them Georgetown Hoyas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Where they chop uh, and screw. Yeah. Yeah. That's more of a Dallas thing. Sorry. Fl- flew over people using their shirts as helicopters. You, do you need a license to do that? Because helicoptering, uh, it's a, there's a lot of certification. 
<laughs> no, you just have to go to <laughs> you have to go to a uh, nursing home to helicopter. Mm. You could motorboat in high school. Right round, right round. Yeah, get it? Do you get it? Yeah, I get it. All right. As long, as long as you're sitting on somebody's lap and they're kind of helping you steer, you're fine. Right. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I went to the uh, Disney World. You went to the Disney World. Tell can, can you? So, so I, I assume it was uh, aside from, aside from just the balls heat. Dear God, August really, Chris? Um, <laughs> hey, life's funny, man. I know. I, I know. I, I know that you literally could not have gone any earlier or any later. Correct. So that's that. that, that that's not entirely on you. But threaded the needle with that one. Yeah. No. You. Uh, you really uh, uh, split the uprights. Like quarter thrower. Yeah. Like quarter. <laughs> no. No. I think you mean ball kicker. Right. Yeah. So, so can, can you? Did you see any uh, stellar examples of humanity? You know, it's like uh, you, you. You think that you hate foreign people. Good <laughs> God. You have a, you have a pretty good idea of which groups you're just not too keen on. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, and then you, you know, then you, you realize you want to make a scene with pretty much all of them. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's part of it. Um, just a, just a disregard for anyone around you is what I, I see out of foreign people that are at Disney World. <laughs> Chris, you sound like a member of Stormfront. No, they just don't have. I'm not saying I, that they I don't, I'm not saying the horrible things that should come to them. They should just be like lined up and thrown off the juice but, guys but, building. Well, no, is that uh, I mean, so I guess here's. Here's my question for you. I like I would imagine like just just like you know middle class Americans, you know like like white folks being even more like entitled and shitty about shit. No, no, not at all. Oh. Nope, it's like I think that there the entitlement at Disney World has to do with how far you traveled to get there. Okay. And I think that the further you travel from, the more that you you only care about your experience and don't really care about whether you push little kid out of the way. Hmm. Did that happen? It did. And I would think you out of all the people in the world who got trampled by a bunch of little people holding cameras. <laughs> so you can say it, the Japanese people. Oh, all right. Sorry. The word escaped me. Um, <laughs> well, no, your, your calibrations all off. <laughs> but any, yeah. So that, that's one thing I noticed. Yeah. Um, no, the no. Other... I, was, I, I was. Yeah. I was. I was uh, stomped. I was stomped to death um, at MGM after the right. be- after the Beauty and the Beast show. Yeah. Yeah. You were you you, you were buried <laughs> with a Ninja Turtle doll. Yeah, it was pretty great. And then you and then you came back. No, nah, no, I'm still there. Hmm. Great. Yeah. It's pretty good. So yeah. What else did I notice? Um, hot. Um, I noticed. Is really, really hot, paralyzed woman. <laughs> Just like really ripped, like a lot which of I, like a lot of core. Which I haven't, I haven't really ever seen necessarily. Huh. Not one that took my my brain by storm. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, did you? Oh God, I'm having a seizure. Please, you're too hot. Let me use your chair for stability. What? How paralyzed Normally, are we talking I'm, here? How paralyzed are we talking here? Uh, like a custom wheelchair, because that's what I thought. I saw her, and I was like, "Oh my god, she's short and, and beautiful." And then I realized, like, "Oh shit, she's in a chair." And it was like, "Oh, it's probably a rental. She probably sprained her ankle." And then I looked at the chair, and it's like a real chair, you know, like it's mm-hmm. molded to her butt, and it's got wheels that are tilted in. Like this is to not fi- uh, this is like- not a this is not a hobby. This is a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, in a <laughs> in a manner of speaking, that that I guess that could be considered a lifestyle. Um, so they were like they they were like uh, tilted in like like death ball like right yeah, yeah. like she was gonna like uh, upend other wheelchairs with them by skidding <laughs> sideways. She had a cow catcher over her shins. Right, there were like spikes like uh, the the chariots of fire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think you're thinking of Ben Hur. <laughs> chariots of fire is about like running. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> this, this sent me down this like days of thinking about paralyzed people and driving to work today. I started thinking about prosthetics. Yeah, yeah. 
And I should have you know that like the the sexual thoughts about this ended after about five minutes. So like I'm not I'm not digging <laughs> d- deeper into that Chris, world. You're braver. You you're braver <laughs> than most folks. Most most folks would have not admitted to any sexual thoughts at all. So, but I did. It's like you know playing with their legs like pipe cleaners. You know, like <laughs> practicing my Boy Scouts knots with them. <laughs> But and you then I, they still and have then I bones, was reminded right? they still have bones. I know. And then then my mind <laughs> caught up with me, and it's like, no, she can't. She can't walk because her spine's broken, not because she doesn't have bones. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, they put like they. She, she was dipped up to her waist in acid that dissolved her bones and nothing else. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, deboned her. I have no. I had, I have no bones, and I must walk. I have no bones. Um, so then I started thinking about prosthetics and I, and I was listening to uh, This American Life on my way to work and it was about this guy, this doctor who killed his dad. And, I just finished that episode today. But he strangled him. And um, and so I was thinking like, okay, so if you're like f- forensic, you know, and in investigating a crime scene and the person like got strangled with like one of those bionic hands that the, you know, that they're yeah. doing like the devil's mind control with these days or something. No, that's are they, the, the, those things are fucking cool. Are they putting unique fingerprints and things on those? I know. Or, or are, are there just criminals like that are just going to have all their shit taken off and you put like the $6 million, you know, criminal man. I, well, I mean, Huh. So I got a guy. I got a guy I can ask because that's actually a really good question. However, like the thing about your about your fingerprints is that hey, you can't oil. You what? What's that? The oil in your skin. That's what leaves it. Yeah. So that's that. that that's one thing. Another thing is like, couldn't a very crafty criminal just replace the fingers and then put? And, the, and then put the different fingers on. Also, Chris, you are describing the plot to some kind of like cyberpunk thriller where the criminal underclass goes through cybernetic enhancements in order to avoid leaving like traces. So I don't want to leave fingerprints. I will have my hands chopped off and replaced with death stranglers. Yeah, Escape from Gattaca Island. Yeah. That was a weird sequel. It's a weird, weird sequel. I thought Peggy was great. Mm. <laughs> Who's... <laughs> <laughs> you say Piggy, and all I can think of is Turtle from Entourage playing a character named Piggy. Yeah, he's playing the kid from uh, Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Sloth? Right. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Weird. That was like five five horizontal steps. And I, I got a guy that I can ask. Those, uh, those hands are pretty great. Thank you. <laughs> Not there. Some people say it should be a model. Yeah, yeah. I got to I got to see one. Um, nah, this is maybe an embarrassing story, so I will not say that. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm not gonna say it. So. Well, then let me tell one about okay. you. Oh. No. Um. <laughs> no. If it was about me, I would be fine. I have no oh, shame. It's However, about some, it's, it's, it's about, about the, it's about somebody else. The guy. You've told me that story okay. before. Have I? Okay. Yeah. Not, yeah. not not in company, so. <laughs> no, not in company. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So, yeah, amputee. Um, is Epcot as bullshit as I remember it being? Mm, mm. Uh, and it, no, it wasn't. I mean, it was less crowded, so you could, you know, take your time and look. But, yeah, you know, that's the other thing, too, I guess, about the adventure is, is that that whole Disney World thing, it's going to become like an abandoned scary amusement park sometime here soon. Yeah. Because it's just old and technology is so available to you today, like at your house and like you don't have to go there for that. So as soon as these kids give up their dreams and hopes, the better, you know, Uh, because that would make that go away. Yeah. What's like what's what's crazy about that to me is that it, it seems like they are they are wisely they're wisely investing their money in improving the experience. It's no longer just like a ticket and then a full on like Mad Max escape from New York snake Pliskin free for all to try and get into a line. Like, like you got a box of shit that like you like just had like, and here's your complimentary bump of cocaine, you know, to give you that Miami experience. Like they're like, right. They, like, but once you, but once you get there, it's not like as great as they make it out to be the experience. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's still hurting people. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, and, and, and you, and you're hurting people that aren't pl- that aren't all playing by the same rules. Right, right. Well, some of them got those VHS tapes that were like how to hack Disney. Not even that. I'm just talking about because of the people from around the world. Like they're mm-hmm. all, you know, it's football, soccer, man. You know, it's like you got two two different ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, I don't. It's 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 uh it, it's. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> And by by which you mean you're glad it's something you did? Oh yeah, no, I'm glad that we did it, and and uh, the 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 minor that I, that accompanied me, she had a great time. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I can give her back to her family, and yeah, she's probably not going to tell them too much. <laughs> well, you know, I think that discretion is it's one of the it's one of the primary things you get from Disney World. Yeah, I mean, if it's... you're gonna if you're gonna go to Disney, you got to steal a kid. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, mean, come on. You can't go there as a 32-year-old man and be like, Oh, my God, Chris. I just, in my my head, I thought of, like, the saddest, the saddest idea, which is, like, families on Craigslist that will rent their children out to, like, couples so that they can go to, so that they can go to Disney World without feeling weird. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just kind of like, oh, baby, baby for hire. Rent a baby. This is your baby now. Can I get a picture? Can I get a picture of you with my kid at Disney World? <laughs> we're gonna cherish. We're gonna cherish your memory forever. <laughs> huh. Although I bet there are shitty parents that would probably do that just to, yeah. to not so that they could fulfill the other people's need, but so that they could just give the kid the experience without actually having to do it. Right, right. So, like, hey, you know, this is this this is this is Aunt Jody and Uncle uh, un- Uncle Reginald. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna take you. They're gonna take you to. Uh, I don't care if you've never met them. I don't I don't I don't care if they're actually younger than me. Uh, but they're gonna take you to Disney World. Bye, bye, honey. See you later. Yeah, Uncle Reggie says my thighs are soft. Oh, now I'm sad. What? It's sunny there. There's sunscreen. <laughs> What does that have to do with the relative th- softness of a thigh? I don't know. I mean, don't can't you just notice something? <laughs> can't Reggie just notice something? Yeah, can't Reginald just you know? Can you just appreciate the soft, supple thigh of a minor? Chris Reginald is his dad. Okay, he's Reggie. Oh, a minor, not a minor. <laughs> gotcha. I thought you were, were you saying to like a West Virginia coal miner, <laughs> right? <laughs> Make make miners' wish come true. Yeah, no, you know I think that I think that miners they they they, they keep their dreams buried deep down beneath the earth, just right. like a, yeah, you know, which you is which, which is sad. A dream buried is a dream Stream, denied. Stra- strangely, did not want to go on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. <laughs> you know what? Strangely enough, he did go, but he was insufferable, <laughs> pointing out just all the differences. Like you know. Well, <laughs> This track goes off the rails. We're all dead. Yeah, I was trying to tell him that Columbia is the funnest place at Epcot. But <laughs> you know they don't uh, they don't use canaries anymore. They got a uh, they got sensors. Oh, Reginald. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Reggie, would you how, like a, how did would you like a, a black lung pop? It's a sucker. <laughs> it's licorice flavored, Reggie. Right. <laughs> Hey Reggie, how do they get like radio transmissions out of the mines? Well, uh, well, they, they they hook up the electrodes to the tracks, and it uses like an antenna. Oh, you're a rascal, Reggie. You're a rascal. <laughs> huh. So that's cool. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Did a bird poop on you? Nope. No. Bird pooped on me last time I was there. Right. It was upsetting. Maybe you'll go back with your family someday. <laughs> well, no, no. Let me hook up with Reggie. See who his connect was. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can go with someone else's family someday. <laughs> As a joiner. Yeah. Hey Dennis. Maybe, hey Dennis. Maybe, uh, you, you, you and your happy family are going. Do you need someone to uh to, to watch your coats? Maybe you can go with your life partner's grandkids sometime. <laughs> uh, you know he found himself. <sighs> what i mean down at the down at the station you can ride around in cars that's your partner 
It's like right. it's like police, you see. <sighs> man, oh man. Hey Chris, do you have any stories? I do. Just depends on how sad you want to get. I'm ready to be pretty sad. Can you tell me a story? Uh yeah. Parents wondering whether their four year olds will grow up to be on the honor roll might need to pay attention to the drawings that they do as children. You call that a son? Son's not happy. Son doesn't smile. The son is forever. (laughs) What's the son's name? Ray. (laughs) I would have gone with, I would have gone with soul, but okay. My bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. King's college, London did a study, a long-term study and link between how well children draw at age four and their intelligence at age 14. Mm -hmm. Uh, The emphasis that it's only a moderate link and that drawing ability doesn't determine intelligence, but they were nonetheless surprised to find that the correlation, that there was any correlation at all. In the study, they asked 16,000 kids um, to draw a picture of a child. They also conducted other tests. The intriguing part came when they then reconnected with the kids 10 years later. (laughs) Did they not find out the results? And it turns out that the kids that drew better at age four, at age 14, uh, had already had already had children in a retirement home. <laughs> so, yeah, that's huh. good. Yeah. But we're pushing our kids, you know? Yeah. If you're not retired by 25. No, no. I mean, what are you doing? You might as well. You might as well just uh, consign yourself to working until. Seriously, that's how it feels sometimes. If you're not retired by 25, if you're not independently wealthy by 25, you're going to be working until the day you die. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is stop humoring your kid when he draws something that's shitty. You got to you got to tell him it sucks. Make, make, it, make him better. That would be a wonderful way to just like ruin a 14 year old's day. It's like okay, you just, you're you're pulled out of class, and some some men and ladies in lab coats come, you know, like like approach you and say, "All right, so ten years ago you drew this, and it was shit." Yeah, I just, why are you judging ten years ago me? Let me show you why you've spent why you spend your evenings at Mathnasium. <laughs> you know, that's because because you didn't draw the sun right. Is, is Mathnasium a thing? It is. Yeah, it's like a, a tutoring center. Oh, okay. I'd actually never seen one, phys- like actually in real life. Yeah, but they had one next to uh, they had, a, had one in a strip ball next to a uh, store called the Pleasure Dome. <laughs> the Pleasure Dome. Yep. What is that? I feel like so, I've heard of that before. I, mean, I don't think you have. No. What is like? What is the Pleasure Dome? Mind's Eye. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. <laughs> I, I I just wouldn't put it past like having some kind of like here's where you buy crazy electro helmets that s- s- simulate coitus. No, you can get that. It's just non functioning. It's for people with a dark brown fetish. Yeah, Marty will never believe it. Um, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Mom, look at me. I get off with no hands. <laughs> No, I get off with hands, except it's those hands that Garth was experimenting on when Rob Lowe went to talk to him. Right. About the sponsorship deal. Huh. Yeah, so I guess that makes a degree of sense because, like, at that age, you can't expect a lot of, like, technical proficiency. You know? Right. Like he's, oh, you're cross hatching as shit, you stupid little kid. He's not going to read a Back size. Him. No, no, he's, gonna, he's not going to do that. But, um,. But, like, to a certain extent, being able to draw well is an extension of kind of being able to see and, you know, model things well in your head. So if, yeah. if, if your hand is if, – if all kids' hands are equally dumb, which you can make an argument that they are going to be, like they haven't had a chance to, like, practice and get the, you know, get the hand dumbness out, like the, like the differentiator might be, like, their ability to perceive the world. And perceptiveness is a pretty good link to just overall intelligence, right? I think so. Yeah. It's not funny, but that's my actual, I mean, it would be a weak correlation, but. (sighs) Well, no, I'm glad that you show some intelligence and compassion in your opinions, not just the bigoted hatred that you've you've (laughs) expressed so far. (laughs) Utter contempt. 
contempt for the world. You know, you know, yeah, one one step at a time. Yeah. Huh. I and mean, it's good to know you're capable of it. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just all I'm seeing is pictures of pictures of Robin Williams. Every site that I go to. Why did he? What happened? Uh, he was. Oh, Chris, you 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 can't be. I don't want to be the one to. I was down for days when I heard it. Were you really? No, no, I wasn't. Was it about Mrs. Doubtfire too? Uh, he was in production on that, right? No, I don't think so. No, oh. I think they were still working out the details. Yeah, yeah, they, they it had just been option. It had just been picked up. Um, yeah, no. So, no, he. It's a, I felt really bad because we did a we did an episode of Abject Suffering about the about the Sega Genesis version of the game based on the movie Toys, and we made fun of Robin Williams a lot. And that was like a week before he passed. Huh. Yeah. You should be nicer to people. I know, right? I should just really you 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 get you get back what you put in, you know? Right. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of what gets put in, I've whoop. got a, what? I said whoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a warning for uh, anybody who is listening to us in McMinnville, Oregon. Okay, file this under archaic weapons used in the modern day. All right, teen out on a country road jogging car drives by teen goes ow what happened and um it wasn't a car it was a, it was a, it was an older small blue pickup truck chris these are breaking details he reached up toward his neck and I'm like what what is this? it was a three and a half inch long blow dart somebody darted a jogging teen chris <laughs> <laughs> What is that laugh? Oh God! <laughs> what is that laugh? That was just great. <laughs> oh God! Ow. So, <laughs> I mean, so that that got my mind a turning. <laughs> and yeah? aren't the blow darts usually meant to uh, usually meant to deliver uh, to be a vehicle for poison? Right. Oh, I put them in my butt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, call. <laughs> Call it hepatitis D. The D stands for dart. I don't. I don't. I don't put anything through a gun that hasn't been in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just it just makes you feel. It just makes you feel better than them. Right. You think you're like, better than me? <laughs> yes, I do because that bullet's been in my butt. Right. Yeah. Huh. No, no. So, so uh, to to deliver toxins or you know, like or, or right, uh, poison. Yeah, poison. Deliver poison yeah. or or bodily fluids. And it's it's. I mean, you don't just dart somebody because like a dart. Yeah, whatever. Unless it hits you in the eye. That's one of my worst fears when I go to a place that has darts. <laughs> Is will this hit me in the eye? There's a lot of horrible ideas in bars, actually. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, just they seem to put things in bars that shouldn't be around drunk people. Like darts. Yeah, like mechanical <laughs> bowls. Really, really heavy, hard balls. <laughs> yeah. Long sticks. Yeah. Um, Other bar games. N- n- narrow walkways over uh, over over very large uh, drops with no yeah. railing. Yeah. Bonfires. <laughs> yep. Anytime there's a bar that puts in a fire pit, like the bar that's kind of across the neighborhood from me, they, they just put in a, a fire pit. I mean, the thing is like six foot by six foot. It's a, I mean, you could, you could roast a, a couple families that's, in that's it. That's not a fire pit. That's a cairn. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. And it's, it's a funeral and, pyre. And yeah, it, it really is. Like, you know, it's, it's a Viking facility. Yeah. Slap a Jedi on there. Heat you for I days. Don't I don't know what that means. It's Star Wars. Don't worry. Do they burn slow? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's because it's because of their enchanted tallow. Huh. I thought it was because of their adamantium claws. Yeah. No, adamantium wouldn't burn. In fact, he would keep on. He would he would he would uh regenerate and burn forever, actually. Really? Yeah. Hmm. No. Um but uh so when so when I guessed it from the tattoos. <laughs> what do you mean, Wolverine? I don't think Wolverine has any tattoos. Yeah, he does. He's, okay, so he's got an X because he was weapon he was weapon number ten. Huh. Does he? He does, huh? You mean? Are you talking about Hugh Jackman? Are you getting, are you getting the actor confused with the character again? No, I do agree. He totally submerged himself in that role. 
but no. Oh, okay. No, no. So I started thinking of like what kind of non-standard poison because this this kid, you know, he's, 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 something, something was on that. So I was thinking, how crazy would it be if there was a poison that didn't take effect unless you got really happy? <laughs> so you could, so like, happy. You, you couldn't go to like birthday parties anymore. <laughs> somebody said somebody shot Pharrell with a dart. <laughs> no, they took some of Pharrell's blood and <laughs> then they boiled it down. They put it through a they centrifuge a couple times. Pulled it out of their butt, dipped it. Yep. Yep. The centrifuge was in their butt. It was, that's my dart noise. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you keep people, uh, you know, that have um, vertigo operate. <laughs> put a centrifuge in their butt. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like a gyroscope. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like how Iron Man has that reactor near his heart, except it's just a it's just a Wii remote. <laughs> That's a Wii remote by your heart, huh? Yeah, no, I w- I would hate to be hit in the eye with a dart. That's one of my fears. Yeah, no, that's a rough one. I guarantee. Yeah. Uh. I think we're going to end strong here, buddy. I, I feel it in my bones. Okay. All right. All right. Let me stretch. All right. Female sex workers prices are dropping. Economist in italic. So I assume that that's a a periodical. Yeah. Uh, They find a 12 country study of prostitute review websites. Yeah. Go ahead and sit on that for a minute. Prostitute review websites. Oh, they exist. It shows that an hour of sex today costs the customer about $260, whereas in 2006, it was around 350 Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know, it's because of all those people with inflation fetishes. Yeah. The financial, the financial. <laughs> Come on. That was funny. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do you Great Depression style. <laughs> sweaty in a, in a line. Sweaty with no lube in a line. <laughs> For some bread. Bread in one hand and your hair in the other. Um, <laughs> cities affected the most, like Cleveland, have seen a particular drop, a particular drop in prices. Um, there's also migration. When he's when a city has an influx of migrant sex workers, supply oh, increases, prices drop. Mm-hmm. Um, that with uh, premarital premarital sex being coming more accepted, and casual meetings through Craigslist uh, becoming more common, fewer men are seeking out prostitutes. Yeah, I mean, if you're just waiting for okay, so Craigslist provides. An outlet for people with mutually low standards, right? So, mm-hmm. so whereas it would have seemed impossible for a no strings attached, I mean, just straight up like animal nasty hookup, like just sweating and screaming, and you know, you kind of you kind of want to die afterwards. Uh, hookup, just real, real raw shit. <laughs> and animal nasty hookup. <laughs> it's like lots of yogurt pouches. Chris, the fruits on the bottom, right? Um, but. <laughs> Oh man, I feel bad about that thing I said. <laughs> that's, that, that's when, when I heckle gay sex, that's what I say. <laughs> Wait, are, are you some kind of like incredibly specific yogurt themed heckler? <laughs> no. <laughs> Would you, you heckle it's, gay sex? It's, it's, it's all like, great hey, to you're, me. You're doing you're doing it so wrong. The fruits on the bottom. That's heckling gay sex. I guess. Yeah. No. That's, you get it. I get it. I'm not happy about the it. The fruit's on the bottom. I get it. You don't have to keep saying it. Huh. Yeah, so that's... So that must mean... I don't see... Dem- okay, so I was about ready to say I don't see demand dropping, but obviously that's the case. That's weird, though, because that that's that speaks to how fucked up like modern sexual morality still is. That, like, because premarital sex is more acceptable now prostitution is seeing a dip in demand right i think so i think what i think what the prostitution market has failed to do is to tap into like the the hipster market 
Because it's the only thing like, that isn't going oh, for that. Look at me. I'm paying for sex. No, no, it could be like an Airbnb kind of thing, except wink, wink. <laughs> Airbnb. <laughs> This has been Those Damn Roskets. <laughs> that's, that's the outro. <laughs> yeah. So I I'm I'm, tr- I'm planning this uh I'm planning this trip to Portland uh in October. For in the, the uh, city of Portland. Yeah, yeah. Um We that, be coming. Yeah, no, good. And I was like, okay, what am I you know I want to stay somewhere? And I, you know, check check the prices at hotels and say, okay, there's that price. I wonder if I can be, you know, any cheaper. And I was looking at Airbnb, trying to figure that out. But then I remembered I don't want to be sex murdered, so then I booked a booked a room at a at a hotel <laughs> nearby. <sighs> that freaks me out. Good couch surf. Oh man, even worse. And I just thought that whole thing freaks me out because it's like there's a whole section. How will you interact with the owner? And most of it's like, oh, I'll just be in and out. I don't want you in my plate. Like, I don't want you in the room. Awkwardly. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> just come in screaming, the fruit's on the bottom. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. So, that, so that, was, that was those damn Ross kids. If you're listening to this and you're thinking, huh, I want more of that, except live where Cole can't edit it. Um, <laughs> Ooh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Trust me, Chris. Other people have, and they're just the, the, the whole world is watching. No, they uh, haven't. Somebody said something. Yeah, so, somebody, uh, our friend Will, and I mean, not our, our friend by extension, my friend uh, Will said uh, on a live broadcast, Cole can't mark or anything. This is going to be literally the best. <laughs> oh God, I don't say I don't say stuff that's that horrible, do I? <laughs> No, I don't think so. I just, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to fit with an image, I guess. No, no, it's, uh, you, you know, so you see, you see, now I feel bad because you're going to tra- you're going to start pushing the, uh, pushing the boundaries, pushing the limits. No, I'm not. Yeah, I know. I mean, nothing's going to change the fact that I hate jigger, jiggers and kites. <laughs> God. See, I know where the line is. I could dance yeah, up I, next I, to I, it. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you just about slipped into saying the actual thing. And that's what no, I'm afraid. No, of. I didn't. I my my snot. Uh, okay, cool. Well, I hope you're I hope you're uh, uh, feeling better. So so we we we've, we've talked about this, but I need to actually say what it is. Chris is going to be joining uh, Gary Butterfield and myself on Duckfeed TV Live. Duckfeed Live, uh, which is a monthly event. It is done via Google Hangout. Uh, Chris, you need to sign up for a Google account. Um, I have a Google account. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a video show where, uh, we will respond to your questions and in general, just, uh, talk around for an hour or so and then, uh, and then be done with it. But, uh, yeah. So if you, if you are a Patreon backer at the $5 a month or more level, you will be able to watch it live and also, uh, submit questions during that time. And there are already some pretty good questions. Uh, this is going to be the end of me. <coughs> so, uh, enjoy me while I last, I guess. Taking down a network. <laughs> call me, call me Leno. <laughs> you started it and you're going to end it. God yep. damn it! Uh, yeah, so that, uh, that 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 should be fun. Uh, check out uh, duckfeed dot or sorry patreon dot com slash duckfeed tv to uh, to get to get a taste of that. And uh, we really look forward to having you there. Um, <laughs> Can yeah. you sign up for a trial? A trial? Yeah. Of the of the duckfeed live. Of Patreon. Of I mean you you can. Donate and then I mean, can then, I put in quarters next... for more time? Is what I'm asking you. I mean, you can donate however much you want and then stop it the next month. Oh, yeah, well, that's one way, I suppose. Yeah, um, cool. And we're also going to make some announcements. We're going to announce what the uh, live show at Portland Retro Games Expo for Watch Out for Fireballs is going to be, um, which is going to be pretty fun. Also, we're going to make the announcement for the autumn adventure game poll. So, uh, which uh, game do you want us to play this autumn? It'll be there. <laughs> just, <laughs> sounds like an sounds like an Asian game show. Autumn Adventure Game Poll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like P O L E. Yeah, yeah. It's like the opposite of a Maypole. By what you mean? It takes place in October. God, I hate jokes. Um, <laughs> I hate yours. Oh, man, 
So, but otherwise, we mentioned the Patreon thing. Uh, ratings and reviews in iTunes really help us out. Also, uh, on Facebook, we are at facebook.com slash those damn uh, Ross kids. Did I miss anything, Chris? You got it all. Sorry, America. Sorry.